Hey y'all! Well, we're back to start a new project, and it's we're actually going to revisit something that I've built before. And I did this previously to getting my YouTube channel started, and it's a EAR834 clone phono stage, tube driven. And it sounds fantastic. And so that's something that we're going to build for you guys. And I'm actually going to rebuild this one slightly different or build another one slightly different than I did this one. Trying to eliminate a little bit of hiss and a little bit of hum that this phono stage has. And what I may be hearing is just the tubes. I know swapping the tubes out changed that drastically. So we may just be hearing the artifacts of a tube preamp. But... We're going to try to get this thing sounding as clean as we can. So, what is a phono stage? Why do we need one? Well, pre-digital, all amplifiers came with phono inputs. And most of them had moving magnet. Some of them had moving coil. You could switch between them. And you'd hook your turntable up to those inputs. And you really didn't think anything else about it. But now I've learned that the phono stage has a huge impact on what a turntable sounds like. And previously, I just assumed that there wasn't a whole lot going on there other than it was just a different input. Well, what we have going on with a phono stage, and it's different than just a regular preamp, is there's a thing called RIAA equalization that was baked into vinyl to compress the grooves on the record so the whole album would fit on one LP. And the deal is that the bass frequency groove widths would be so wide in an analog configuration that it would take up, one song would take up the whole side of the record. So they compressed the bass and amplified the high end and then it would get decoded analog via the RIAA filter network that was built into the preamp. And there's active versions, there's passive versions, there's the quality of the capacitors, there's all kinds of things that go into how well that this decoding is done. And it's, if you think about it, it's sort of like the a uh, digital to analog decoder in a CD deck or a DAC that changes the way that sounds. This is the same sort of thing. So when I got into tube amplifiers, I didn't have a way to hook my a turntable up to it. And I had my old turntable that I hadn't used in years because back in my solid state hi-fi days when CDs came out, they sounded so much better than vinyl I never looked back and packed my turntable up. So, and the ease with no scratch, no dust, all that stuff. But the reality was it just, it sounded better. So when I got into the tube amp thing, I saw all these people going on and on about how great vinyl sounds. So I thought, man, the, these analog tube thing compared to solid state, there's a big difference there. Maybe there is something to this vinyl deal. So I got on my turntable, looked on Amazon. It's like, oh, here's a $40 thing that, you know, a phono stage that will go between my turntable and my amplifier so I can use my turntable. And I hooked it up. And it sounded terrible. And if I hadn't seen so many people on the Internet talking about how great vinyl sounds, I would have just dismissed it of, no, the CDs just sound better. So... The next thing I did is I returned that and I bought like this $99 little tube phono stage thing on Amazon that had like two tubes in it. And then people were saying, oh, yeah, you want to upgrade these tubes to these, you know, new old stock things. So I, I bought some new old stock tubes with it, put, hooked all that up. Still sounded terrible. I mean, it just it sounded like garbage. And I was thinking... What, what's going on here? So, reading further, I heard people talking about how great these EAR-834 tube preamps sound. And I thought, 
hey, the tube amp sounds that much better. Maybe these two preamps are what, you know, really gets it gets the motor running on the turntable. So I ordered this little kit off eBay, and then it was going to be, I think, six weeks for the kit to come. And so I did some some further research and found a solid state phono stage that was about, I think it was about 350 bucks that got really, really great reviews. And so I thought, I'm going to buy one of those. And then, you know, that will get me by for the interim while I'm building this other tube one. And, you know, if the tube one sounds better, I can sell that other one on eBay or, you know, see if they can, see if I can return it or whatever. And so I ordered that solid state one and I hooked it up to my turntable and OMG, it sounded fantastic. And so I realized that the quality of the funo stage has a huge impact on what a turntable sounds like. So if you're going to buy a thousand dollar turntable or even a five hundred dollar turntable and you don't you're not ready to invest three to five hundred dollars in a funo stage or build one yourself just don't bother and keep listening to cds because it's not going to sound good the phono stage is way more important than dare to say even the phono cartridge which is a huge part of it and both of those together are way more important than the turntable that you put them on you're much better going to a yard sale or buying a 50 or 100 dollar used techniques turntable and putting a 250 dollar cartridge in it and then spending three or four or five hundred dollars on a phono stage then spending a thousand dollars on a turntable and then having a shitty phono stage or a cheap cartridge if that makes any sense the 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 turntable spinning of the tone arm that stuff is like nothing compared to the audio difference of a good phono stage and a good cartridge so that said here's my finished thing and actually i'm gonna zoom the camera in okay here's the phono stage that i'm using now the one i built several months ago and then here's the chassis for the new one that we're going to be building and as you can see it's a little bit longer one of the things that i want to do is isolate the phono stage board from the power supply and let me show you on the underside of this one you can see the boards all one piece from one to the other this is the power supply section and here's the signal processing port and it's a pretty long board so the the preamp has to be kind of this shape and there's not a whole lot of extra room inside this thing and I built it this way to make it as compact as possible well, like I said it's got a tiny bit of hum in it and even though I've mounted the power transformer externally and I have the signal wires as short as I could make them there's still a little bit of noise that actually when I get done it may not be any different but I'm gonna try so what we're gonna do this time here's the board and it originally comes as one piece like this just like that and what I it's got a, a perforated thing right here where you just go like this and the power supply board separates from the signal board and so what we're going to do this time i had originally thought about putting this and the transformer and everything into a separate uh its own separate case or chassis and then having you know like an umbilical cord going between the two but there's really not room on my little shelf where i have my stereo gear set up and so my plan was to break them apart like this and separate them as far as we you know i possibly can and then get some sheet aluminum and fabricate a couple of bulkheads to put inside the chassis between the power supply 
and the signal board to isolate them from each other as much as possible. The other plan, uh, the part of the plan is I'm going to have one hole drilled through the bulkhead on like this side and then drill it on this side on the second one so the cable kind of snakes through like that to give as much shielding as possible. So then we're going to mount the power transformer here. There's a little choke that will go inside on the back. This is the power supply connector, a little on-off switch. The other thing we didn't do on the other one is there's no power indicator. And I've accidentally left this thing on overnight before just because I didn't realize it was still on. And so there is an LED here on the power supply board that I'm going to drill a small hole, which would be like in this location right here in front of the switch, to have the LED come through. And then I can adjust the brightness of that with a resistor. It's an orange kind of looking thing that fits in with the tone of the tube glowing and stuff. So I think it'll look nice. The other thing I want to do too is this one I just left it bare aluminum and kind of polished it up. And then on the front, hopefully you can hopefully you can see this. There's here's the two input jacks. There's the ground for the turntable and my cute little skunky design logo on the front. This one, this next one I build, I want to paint it kind of crinkle black so that it matches my black powder coated chassis that I normally use for my amplifiers just to kind of give it that whole kind of skunky designs theme. The metal work wasn't too difficult. You can direct mark a lot of these just through the board by laying the board on top of the chassis and then measuring off the center of these holes with a you know an accurate vernier caliper and then laying out those holes on here for the holes we punch for the three tubes. I like the idea of having, you see the tubes, the tops just barely peek out of the top of it. It's just enough to grab the tubes and wiggle them out to do tube rolling, but it also has shielded the tubes with the metal chassis to help keep the tubes from getting noise externally from somewhere else. So I think that was a good idea, but the more I think about it, I almost wonder if having them stick out more would help shield them from the power supply. But then there's the microphonics of the tubes picking up sonic dings from the room. So I'm gonna have to think about that one. The other thing we're gonna do differently on this one is and let me kind of show you here. The, the kit comes with just bags and bags of, of parts. And from my experience, a lot of these made in China kits or parts, these are fake capacitors. They're probably, or I'm, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing they are. And they're using a, you know, slightly off name for brand name stuff. And they're paint, they're gold like you would see from audio grade Nikicon caps. I'm not sure these are even audio grade stuff. I don't know how noisy these resistors are, if that's where the, you know, where I'm getting the hiss from. And so what I decided to do, and like they, it does come with like the, the rectifier and some other parts for the power supply, which I think are pr probably fine. And so I'm doing a mix of using some of the parts like the tube sockets and the, you know, the rectifiers and stuff, the diodes and stuff like that that come in this kit. But then I bought, you know, much more high quality passives. You know, these are all uh, Nikicon caps and as, as these are, I bought some really nice 1% PF value caps that are done for the RIAA network. I bought some really high quality uh, mica caps for that. I got, you know, really nice Vichy metal film resistors. Got nice power resistors. And I also decided 
I got these Mundorf caps, and then I'm gonna try some some MyFlex copper oil caps. And the reason that I bought some of these to use is that is the very first capacitor that the preamp sees. And that's where the most amplification is going on. And so I felt like if we were going to put a really nice capacitor in this funnel stage, that should be the location that you'd want to do it is the very first one in the chain. So we're going to try I've never used these before, but they get really good reviews from people. The other thing that's super important is this is the... I mean, they're still in the little bag, but this is the first resistor on the board that goes from the input signal to ground, and it sets the impedance for the funnel stage. It's important that that resistance matches what your funnel cartridge is looking to see as far as impedance. And so this needs to be as accurate a resistor as possible. So spend a little extra money, get a nice resistor that's 1% for that location to make sure that your photo stage matches the impedance that your photo cartridge is looking to see. Also got a set of these little standoffs that, that stand the board off. The other thing to note is like this is, this is the input end of the board and then the output of the board is right here. And I didn't want to run the outputs over by the power supply. So you could either run them out the side or run them out of the top like I did on mine. And it actually makes it a little easier to assemble if you put them on the top. Because then you can, as you're putting this board in place, you can feed those through the holes in the top of the, board, or the, top of the chassis. And then put the screws in that mount the board onto the standoffs. The last thing, if you are interested in using this on a power amplifier that doesn't have a volume control, it's got a place right here on the board for installing a volume potentiometer. So to wrap up this video, we're going to break this up into multiple parts. I know some of y'all may not care anything about watching me, you know, soldering the components on this board or you know building this kind of stuff some of you may want to just watch the metal work on the chassis and how i install the stuff into it and fabricate up this bulkhead thing in here to shield the power supply you may you may want to just watch that part of it so i'm going to try to split this up into those kind of relevant pieces like we'll have you know specific videos about the metal work we'll have specific videos about you know the components and you know let if y'all are interested watch me soldering all this stuff onto these boards and some of you may just enjoy watching that kind of thing so and i'm going to label each accordingly so that the parts that you're not interested in you can just skip and then obviously at the end we'll do a review i'll maybe go over the different tubes that are appropriate to use in this thing but trust me the other one that I built sounds unbelievably good. You will not be disappointed in this. And this, this thing, I'm sure, sounds the equal of a $1,000 photo stage. So, yes, it's worth investing some time and money and buying some expensive capacitors and like all these, these high-end passives I bought for this thing. It's absolutely worth the investment. So anyway, we will see you in our next part of this where I'm going to work on laying out the metalwork, showing you the tools that you need to get to do the metalwork correctly. And I think this is going to be a real fun project. So we'll see you soon for some more fun on stage fun. Y'all have a great day.